Andrew, since almost 40 years you are doing research and practical words work regarding corporate parenting. How do you observe the change of the topic and maybe also the acceptance of corporate parenting in the companies you are working with? Is there a higher acceptance? Did the way how to accept it change over time or not? What is your impression on this? Um, well, let me give you a bit of, uh, a bit of history. Because when um, I started working on this with Michael Gould, uh, the dominant thinking then was the Boston Consulting Group matrix. Yes. And the idea of balanced portfolios. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, about that time, the finance people were beginning to argue that balance could be better done by fund managers than by parent companies. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we were beginning to, the ideas were beginning to um, unravel in, in academia, but not so much in, in management minds. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, coming up with the idea that uh, you know, corporate centers should add value and making presentations um, in the end of the 80s um, and saying to um, corporate strategy people that, that instead of uh, uh, being demanding of businesses, of the business divisions, to mm -hmm. have good business, business strategies, they should be demanding of themselves mm -hmm. to have good corporate strategies. Mm -hmm. And this was a, you know, a big shock. I particularly remember one uh, um, strategist responding, no, no, you, you've got it completely wrong, Andrew. You know? mm -hmm. the, our, our role is not to do something for the businesses. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's their role to do something for us. Mm -hmm. um, now, we've come a long way, yeah. a very long way. And we heard today in the presentation from yeah. Siemens Mm -hmm. Now, even, even in that presentation, he spent not so much time talking about the added value. What is the reason why corporate managers have so many difficulties to illustrate uh, the value added they create? Okay, often they don't create, but they also create value added. Why is it so difficult to communicate it or to explain it? I think it is... It's a, that's a, it's a huge question. Question. It's a mm. very good question, and if I knew the answer, I would be probably mm. richer and wiser. But maybe it was illustrated today in the presentation from Bayer, mm -hmm. and there was a question about, well, what's the added value of, of Bayer? And, um, and the speaker responded with some statements about the mission statement and then some statements about shared services. And, um, and I think that illustrates the difficulty because when executives think about these issues, they think of all of those um, artifacts, the mission statement, the vision statement, the corporate functions, the shared services, mm -hmm. the boards, the you know, board subcommittees and so on. And they, and, and they, instead of seeing straight to the gold, mm -hmm. so for me, you know, in that particular example, the, the big gold is the work they have been doing on, on portfolio change mm. and pushing down into the divisions to mm. affect the way they allocate cash and which businesses mm. they support. Um, and it's just that, it's just a way of thinking that is, doesn't seem to come naturally. And mm. Because of all of the administrative yep. uh, demands around them that they don't see so crisply where the gold is. I mean, I have, a, I have an example of yeah. the opposite, yeah. but it's very rare. Okay. Um, if you look on most of the multi-business firms at the moment, so what I can observe is that the power of the uh, functions, of the corporate functions, are increasing again. So are we in face of a new period of bureaucracy and ivory tower? <laughs> Um, as you know, I'm quite suspicious of corporate functions. Yeah. Um, and I think they have a, a habit of empire building and becoming more ambitious than, than, than they should. Um, however, there is now an understanding of the dangers. Mm -hmm. We've been through enough cycles of corporate downsizing, corporate center, you know, layoffs, um, that people understand the risks. So we will probably go some of the same journey, but not as far, I suspect, mm -hmm. as in the past, mm -hmm. in terms of the bad, the bad side of corporate functions. The recent focus of your research, Andrew, is uh, the subtraction of value. So we all want to add value, to create new value, 
but the reality shows us quite often we destroy value. So um, the question is how do we get attention on, on the question of uh, subtraction of values because that's not a topic uh, corporate managers probably like. Yeah. So what is your recommendation how to get the attention on the question of subtraction of value? Well, I mean the, the, the difficulty is getting, even getting clear attention on added value is not easy. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and then getting attention on subtracted value mm -hmm. is, is tough too. But um, again, I think there's been enough experience of the, the bureaucracies that, that have done damage, enough experience of sp spin-offs, um, the Osram spin-off that have done well without the, uh, with the corporate influence, that people are, are sensitive in an intuitive way, mm -hmm. uh, but we need to give them tools to be sensitive in a more uh, structured way. Mm -hmm. um, in the morning we discussed also the question of synergies and one of the arguments was that the easiest type of synergies to realize are the intangible ones. Do you have um, experiences as what kind of synergies are easier or not so easy to realize? I think um, a sort of simple answer to that is the easy synergies to realize are the very obvious ones. Financials, for example, are? Well, um, I'm not sure if I would call financials a synergy, um, because in a sense, if you have spare cash in one business, you can get it to another business without a common parent. So, so cash pooling but, is not a synergy? No, I don't see cash pooling as a synergy, mm -hmm. because, uh, because that happens in the capital markets anyway. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you deposit your spare cash in the bank and they lend it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, no, the synergies, the obvious ones are things like consolidated sharing sales forces mm -hmm. or you know, combined research and development or um, sharing um, offices in China. If you have two, three buildings, three businesses in China and they're all operating in Shanghai, why, why wouldn't they share an office? So I think usually it's the obvious ones that uh, make sense. The ones that are less obvious, you know, complicated best practice sharing, um, you know, trying to get cross-selling between businesses that may not have exactly the same customers, those usually never work. Realizing synergies means usually crossing silos, uh, yes. silos of the operating units. Uh, what are your observations regarding this crossing of silos? Because it's not so easy. It sounds easy, but it is not probably so easy. Well, if you look at the market economy, yeah. then businesses are doing business with other businesses all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what business is about, doing businesses with other businesses. Um, so why would that not be the same inside the company as outside the company? Mm -hmm. And it, to a large extent, where the, where the logic is strong, then people do business inside the company as easily as they do business with others outside the company. Um, it's, it's usually difficult um, because the synergy that they, the company is trying to create is, is, is either very small or, um, or very hard to get. And then, and then everyone talks about silos. But actually, silos don't really exist in the market economy. We are interacting all the time. You and I are, are from different universities and we're, we're working together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crossing our university silos. Exactly, yeah. So my final question, Andrew, is where does your great passion for corporate parenting, for corporate management come from? Oh. Maybe a historical question, I don't know. Well, I think I credit my father. And I think probably because when I was little, he didn't always behave in the way I wanted him to behave. And so I have always wanted to, t to tell the people in authority how they should be behaving. So he, he tried to realize synergies <laughs> between your sisters and you? <laughs> no, I think more it was just, uh, it, it, it was, yes, that too, I was too small to tell my father how he should be behaving. And so I'm now taking it out on, on industrial um, okay. leaders. <laughs> Many thank you. Andrew for interviewing.